Okay, so welcome back from the break. You're still watching a team interview right here on Metro TV. My name is Desi Faden. This time I'm here with Nanaya Tanobate and uh, Helen Kay. And we mentioned to you that today we've got great guests in the studio. We are they're already, you know, excited with what was going on off air. Now we've got to do the introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a, a, a man, I was just saying off air that he, like, there isn't anything about music that he doesn't know. He's a, he plays the saxophone, he's a, a percussionist, the band leader, record producer. He's everything. He's music, an embodiment, an epitome of music. music. And he's been there from way, way back. And, uh, you know, if you hear someone out, I like that. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Jedu Blay Amelie, the legend in the studio this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining. Okay. Whoa, okay. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and also, this man is a smooth man. Mm -hmm. He is Mr. Smooth. Dada. With the lyrics. You know. His lyrics are always yeah, nice. Yeah. He, he's, sure. he's also one of them embodiment of music, soothing voice. Started playing, uh, you know, um, in church at a very young age. And that is how he's been on till now. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Dada KD in the studio with us also. Okay. So that there was a show you as know. a <laughs> <laughs> show as a <laughs> Yes. <laughs> welcome, yes, so welcome to Entertainment Review. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's good to have uh, both of you on. When I was it's doing the introduction, I was saying that if you look at the profile, there's so much on there that makes it so clear that there's an understanding of music because you are everything, so you know. What is needed here? What is needed there? What is how important was it for you growing up to get involved in all of this to get all of these things to help you become a complete musician? We well, were growing up, there were so many of our elders, mm. you know, there were so many bands, you know. So you just look at whatever that you want to uh, be, you know, when you grow up, then you know, you hit the road of what we want to be because. I knew that music is uh, information, you know, and education. Mm. So I went to my elders, you know, whereby they taught me the rudiments of music, you know, compositions and arrangements and all that. Because um, if you want to embark upon that, then it means that you have to get yourself well armed. You know, so when you hit in there, then you know exactly what you want to do. Because if you don't know what to do, maybe when you hit the studio, their record producer, this and that, you know, that will, and a uh, music arranger, and uh, so all of them will be part of what you want to be. You know, for me, I arrange my own music, I produce my own music, you know, I compose my own music, I sing my own music. So it means that I did learn from my elders, and because it's very important. Um, like I said, music is, for, is an information. Um, if you go to America like that, you see that you meet well trained musicians. But music is a language. If you don't know the language, you cannot work with them. Because if you, somebody tells you that, okay, man, this composition is based on 145, you must understand what is 145. If it's okay. 1625, you must understand all that. Because these are all the kind of uh, what we call color formations, you know, that you know, help you to understand the direction that you want to take. Okay, so your bio says high life. Now, that KD says contemporary high life. Just give us a breakdown of what contemporary mm -hmm. highlight music is. And then I'll get back to him for him to give us the highlight proper structure from back then. Um, personally, I think um, we all grew from a series of high life music, like uh, we call it, uh, it's like a, a genre that has a big umbrella. See, okay. all like mine, I never had a chance to, you know, join a band because mm -hmm. I was a tiny young guy. In fact, I was refused even in attempt to join a band because you need to go to school first. Okay. So my, with my situation, <laughs> only have to do music because out of desperation. Even though I have the feeling to do it, growing up as a young guy, I learned to play congas. But like me, I am somebody, my love for music is undeniably, nothing can be compared because I love listening to music. So instead of me, going to have a band to have my four-month three notes studying music at school, I was rather sleeping. Because the moment it hits me, I'm okay. I can easily relate to the lyrics, the beat, the arrangement. So, like Uncle said, with them, they have to go through the, the original 
traditional ritual, you have to draw by, you have to go to school, you have to do all that. But like us personally, I grew up from a regime of, let's say, watching Michael Jackson. So mm -hmm. like my music, I say I am not a highlight musician, but because I'm a, a Guinean, I have accepted it. But I am an R&B singer, but we don't have that word. Okay. In three. In three, I can say, oh yeah, a romantic high life singer. So you, me, are, you I'm say you're an R&B singer. singer. Because, um, unlike Uncle, he does music, you can dance at life. Mm -hmm. He plays instruments, and he t a touch of every instrument has a meaning to what he say. But with us, we have no clue. We use our voices and flair the music. You see what I mean? So my personal is R&B. I don't belong to that <laughs> uh, kind of a hard love trend. But uh, like I said, I'm a musician. I was born in bred in Ghana. Mm -mm. So I cannot exempt myself completely from that genre. So that okay. If, if you were to give yourself a genre at that time, <laughs> what, what well, you wanted to do, what would have been the name you would have given it? Um, like I said, uh, R&B, it's a rhythm and blues. Yeah. yeah. Because I was, you know, believed music, like Uncle said, is a communication or education. Mm -hmm. So... I didn't feel like I have to let my music violate people's happiness. So I always believe music has to communicate with the people where they feel, the sooner they hear the music, they dance out emotionally, involuntarily. But a situation like we have emotional singers, they come with slogans like, I don't want that. Because unlike me, some, some song like Fatia Fatia and Chroma, the, the moment you hear that I'm coming to talk about two lovely people. So this is how I chose my path. I know that I have tried to sing a lot of normal lifestyle, life it, stories. It, it hasn't worked. But with this kind of how people perceive me to be, that I've channeled that route. Okay. <laughs> Music is made for our neighbors, which okay. are the ladies. That's what I see. Our neighbor is not somebody who lives in the same area. A neighbor is a woman. Okay. So we intentionally made music for them because they promote music. As soon as they hear it, it's everyone's choice. What you're saying is very interesting yeah. because I was thinking that it's just over the period, the changes that have happened with her life. Uncle, and, and I'll, come, I'll, I'll come to you with this. I want you to give us a breakdown of what you grew up to hearing as her life music and when you got into it, and over the years, the transitions that you have seen till this time. You know, when I was growing up, um, like I said, there were so many bands. Okay. Yeah, because in the crime commerce time, you know, secondly, we had um, uh, Broadway bands, you know, CK band, then this Carousel, we had uh, Weavers, you come to Accra, E.T. Mesas, and the Ramblers, and the Black Beats, you know, there were so many bands. But... One thing that was so much significant about what they were doing was they were enlightening the people, okay. you know, giving the information to the people because they're using the music as a platform, but they were educating the people as well. Talking about marriage life, talking about, you know, where you work, you know, um, whatever that is happening, you know, around that time and the vicinities, you know, they were using that for, uh, to educate the people. So... It gave me an insight that, you know, music is not only for dancing. You know, we have music for dancing and all that. But still, you have to educate the people through the music so that when they go back home, they can be, you know, thinking and reflecting what they heard, um, you performing or singing. So um, I grew up with that. And uh, it came to a certain point that I said, okay, so when I make a song like... Uh, cut your code according to your size, and things like that. It's part and parcel of life, that everything that you do in life, you got to make sure that, you know, because if you cut oversize, you know, people, yeah, if you, yeah. is it too tight, you know, you feel uncomfortable. You know, so all these things, you know, were at the back of my mind. So how life itself, like I say, it's our heritage, and how life itself <laughs> is, is the tree of all dance music, music in the world. Mm. Our life give birth to every dance music in the world. Whether it's South American dance music or American music, or you go to India and things like that, it has high life connotations in them. 
her life, the two connotations in her life is a male and a female. The male is ta, 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 that's the male. The female is ta, 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 but they all fit in into okay. the her life. It depends on what kind of direction that you want to go. So if you take um, uh, South American music, it's in there. If you take American music like a, it's in there. If you take Indian music like, it's right in there. So it's our hard life that gives birth because Africa is the cradle of mankind. So those that had a chance of traveling outside the shores of Africa, they took Africa with them. But Uncle, you're telling me this. I don't know how many of, hmm. of, our, of us growing, growing down mm -hmm. will know this. Yeah. What is the information that everybody can get access to yeah. and know that, you know, this is it? You see, because we have to do seminars and things like that so that we can impact knowledge. You know, we musicians in, in, in Ghana, not only in Ghana, maybe some part of Africa, we don't have time to sit down and share ideas by, you know, doing seminars and all that because it's information and it needs to be passed on because the younger ones that are coming, they are going to carry it. So they need to have that information to move forward. But right now, like we're saying, some of us say, oh, I'm a dancehall artist. <laughs> and so, so dancehall is a total deviation from your heritage. Yeah. Because our brothers that were taken away from here, when they went to Jamaica, they also formed their own, really? because the dancehall thing is a hard life. That's true. But it's in, it's in, in another, another direction. Another form, yeah. okay. In fact, you know, that, that also reminds me. You yeah. see, if you listen to Ghanaian music, woefully, you can understand that most hit songs in Ghana are made in, Rig it. Okay. You can take time and listen. I mean, that's what a gospel Every bit hit, will understand. You see? Go, yeah. gospel there. That's what gospel there. Yeah. <laughs> so, almost you say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, so, you see, we love reggae. But high life itself, like I said, it comes with live performances. So, that is why people don't really want to engage themselves trying to play high life, record it, and play the live. Because if you're a musician... You can be a recording artist, fine, good harmonies, but if you can't perform it live, that is where most people think, yeah, we are living on the global world. What's the point of me, you know, concentrating on the a typical genre that I come from? But because if I put any genre to my music, somebody who understands music language would definitely have to come from my music without knowing I'm from here or here, but at least, like Anke said, charity begins at home. So we should have seminars. But here in Ghana, a lot of people are dying slowly because there's, there's, they don't seem to have a love. The unity is not there. Mm. Because I, as often as I say, Uncle, me, I know he's a good man. We ought to meet. But we hardly say, Uncle, can we go to studio one day? We feel we are okay. We meet and they say hi, hi. But he said, uh, I often say that musicians are the prophets. But when you come to Ghana, you are rather being seen as, um, I don't know you want to use a word that will probably, you know, stir a lot of controversy. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, and that is why we're having this I know, conversation. Because sometimes uh -huh. when you try to lead the way to a better deal, they will tell you are controversial. <laughs> you see what no, I mean, if it's for the betterment of the well, yeah, for the better of Ghana, Ghana. See, I think it's not really about the controversy. We, we grow up listening to a lot of musicians. So apparently every musician is was inspirational driver. But here in case, they came to find a lot of group companies, you know, signing others and them. So we feel like it's business. We understand it's business. But at the end of the day, the heritage wouldn't have to be what? Compromised. I would not have to be, we would have mm -hmm. to be compromised. Yeah. Because we feel like a lot of people, you know, have been sidelined. That's how I see it. Because... Me, for instance, I know I never had a lot of hits growing up because I live mostly in Germany. So I see myself like a Ghanaian living in the diaspora. So more often times, they don't normally engage me in the things that they do here in Ghana. So it always makes me feel like 
I am part new, of an industry. Yeah. yeah. The music that you just said, Fatty Fat and Chroma was almost 18 years and it's still kicking. Why? I recorded in German, all right, but it is here that was being, you know, promoted. But as oftentimes, when they have the domination, have we not shot ourselves in the foot? Because we've had from the 1950s, Uncle said, to the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So the people who passed through your hands. After the 2000s, the Dada Kadis, the Ophorian Pons says, there hasn't been any real mentorship that I am mentoring you to continue high life music. After that period, yourself, Ophorian mm -hmm. Pons like, it's just cut short mm -hmm. and the hip life took over. It was done, done, and now people it's come and say, okay, they just want to do. Ghanaians see musicians and they say, what them? Are they a software? They're not software. Like people would like to see, so, okay, did you see Sword 94, my first album? I've been in the system for almost 28 years, 30. So, my terms is it means me a software. Even if I'm a software, I can be updated. You see, the point is, it's a brand. Papay, more celebrating now. No. Until Obi Wu, they say Obi Kinsa is gone. A lot of great musicians are dying, and I also say myself very soon I will follow them, because Chroma they will make you feel the heat, as if what you Miwa, everywhere they go, your music is being played for people. To, so are you loving the message, the music, the the message and hate the messenger, or maybe I am the prophet, but they see you as we a musician. Then they, they put you there. So musician has to be versatile and what? Dynamics. We don't only have to stick to one genre and say that it's, it's a hard life, like he said. The instrument, the message hmm, is very important. But I see myself like I have to master the romantic aspect of the music because in <laughs> Pekutian, <laughs> I love people to be happy. Hmm, that okay. interesting. That's, that's interesting. They are really, really revealing things, and it's it's, it's good. We, yeah. th these are the things we want to hear to see how we can change the narrative. But then I want to go back to Daddy and ask you. You when Desi asked the question, you summed everything up. You explained the history of the high life. You gave us the the templates of how high life is done. Now, from your time, from the ET mentor from your time to the uh, Ophorian Ponsa, and now what you are seeing, do you still feel we have the Ghanaian indigenous high life tunes in our songs? I don't, I think um, I'm not seeing that because, you know, like I said, everything is based on information and education. Yeah. That kind of workshop thing is not there. That kind of seminar thing is not there. Yeah. Now these young guys have came, come to meet what is called um, you know, computers and all them kind mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. The white man made computer, he put his own rhythms and drum rhythms and bass rhythms and everything in it. Yeah. And they are capitalizing upon that. True. You know, trying to form and just singing a uh, key to it or that kind of thing and thinking that, no, it's not that way. Because, um, like I formerly said, you know, some are born from here and saying that I'm a dance hall artist. Mm -hmm. But if you say dance hall... Uncle, that's all. You have issues about the dance hall. No, no, because, <laughs> no, no, because we know the direction it's coming from. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, our brothers, like I said, our brothers were taken away from it, but they couldn't take Africa away out of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they went there, because of the cultures and everything they met there, you know, something new, you know, uh, came, came out. out. Yeah. You know, I said, like a dance hall, fine. But like I'm saying, the dance hall is a high life, but it's in another direction. Yeah. You know, and salsa music is high life, but it's in another, another direction. Yeah. Calypso music is high life, but it, it's another in direction. another direction. True. But high life is itself, it's a unifier. Mm -hmm. That high life music, mm -hmm. it's a unifier. Because when we go to a dance hall and they play Agbaja music, it's only those that know how to dance Agbaja music that will hit the floor. Or when they play Adua, or when they play Kundum. But the moment they play high life, all of them come to the floor. That's a fact. Yeah. Whether well, you are by German, everybody will come. Right because halal is something that they don't teach you how to do it. You know, you, it's a feel. So you get up and it, it, because even when you play it runs a child, you see the child will be uh, reacting to uh, it. We'll move and to it. Like so halal is a unifier. Yeah. This is what we need to sell to the world. You know, coming from our direction. We need to sell it, let it go beyond the shores of Ghana. 
that if we say I'm a dance hall, that means um, somebody says you are a dance hall, somebody will call himself a dance hall king. Yeah. Are you a king more than the one who created the dance yeah. hall? <laughs> we know that all those are imported journalists that are in the in, in, part of us now. So all the things that you said are the things that identify our high life, but they are it's lost. They are lost. They are yeah, lost. I mean, the they direction, are, yeah. Yes, they are, everything are lost. How can we bring it back in a way to rectify what has been lost? <laughs> it based on only two things. Mm -hmm. Formation. Mm -hmm. And education. education. Good. So with this information education, I remember in an interview, you made mention about the fact that the late Sami Letty, I don't know Sami if I... Sami Letty, yeah. yeah. was, was the one whom you lent your notation, yeah, you your me, composition. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, rudiments and, of music exactly. and all that. Exactly. Yeah. You see, at that time when you were learning, you could see that you were taking something from them that was going to help you to yes. even change the, 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 the music scene yes. in our country. Yep. Now... Are uh, the young crops of artists, are they yearning? Like, are, are they yearning to also learn? And are the veterans also availing themselves to teach the it's, young ones? It's two ways. Mm -hmm. You know, because many a time, when I meet the younger ones or maybe some other elders, they will ask me, Mr. Amber, what are you doing to, uh, you know, the, the, what are you doing to teach the children, mm -hmm. you know, enlighten them? And I told them that, what am I doing? We go to school. It's not school that comes to us at home. <laughs> so if you want to learn something, because many a time I tell them yeah. that you need to come. Yeah. You know, I won't force myself, force myself to come to, come to, to, to come you to come and force it on you. Yeah. No. If you have a direction and you have a future or you have a vision, yeah. then come. Then we, because when I was growing up, uh, going to my elders, they were happy. Yeah. See me a, a young kid. Yeah. You know, that is, I mean, having that courage, yeah. you know, to they were happy. And they will teach you. Exactly. It's the same thing I'm telling you, come, man. Because you won't know the thing, just come and we're going to teach you. Because <laughs> that's how it is. Which artists have come to you? You see? Ooh. Artists? Yeah. Um, oh, I, I, can, I can mention two. <laughs> <laughs> who are who? Of course, you had a feature with them. That's uh, Kelvin, Kelvin Boy, Boy and Papi, Papi Kojo. Kojo. Yeah, Papi Kojo, yeah. yes. And uh, Tic Tac, them, yeah. you know, yeah. it had yeah. happened before. Um, the whole thing is that sometimes they'll be sitting down and, you know, doing some things in the studio. They'll be thinking that, oh, Charlie, Charlie, let's, let's get Mr. Ambuli inside mm -hmm. because, you know, when we get Mr. Ambuli, you know, that sort of yeah, format. Yeah. These are the things that sometimes takes me back because mm -hmm. when we hit the studio, you see that they want to do about six, seven songs, eight songs a day. A day. At a time. Yeah. <laughs> That's not possible. It's not possible. I mean, see? you do something to take the public, let somebody put his hand in his pocket, um, yeah. you know, and buy it, and you just want to do sharp, sharp music. Yeah. No. You know, so sometimes it takes me back. I said, no. Because Michael Jackson, them, all them, sometimes it takes about two years mm. for them to come out with an album. Because mm. they want... The album to reach a certain level that yeah. you know it, could, it can be rejected. In short, but, but let me find out mm -hmm. your time. Did you have a record label? Yes. Okay. And and what was it like for the management team? What were they expecting from you as an artist? You see, at my time, uh, like I said, there were so many bands. Yeah. And all of them were recording. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a, there was a, a kind of competition mm -hmm. a little True. bit. Yeah. You know, because every band was trying to come out with something. Yeah. You know, because we had Decca. Records, we have the um, uh, Philip Records mm. and all that. And that gave the way for us to hear our eldest, you know, but whether it's E.T. Mason or whether it's Black Beats or Ramblers or A.N.G. Uh, C.K. Man or, because all of them were hitting the studio to yeah. record. Yeah. So uh, the saturation of that, you know, gave birth to people trying to uh, be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're trying to do yeah. something yeah. and put it down and because you want to be heard. True. If you want to be heard, it yeah. has to be on a vinyl or yeah. it has to be on a, uh, it has to be recorded. Yeah. You know, so that time and now. It's different. It's different. I, I ask that because I know you had the knowledge, you understood music, you had the skill and the talent. Mm -hmm. Now, because people feel they're on a record label, they have to produce so many things at a time. So they don't have the time to understand the music, have mm -hmm. the skill. Yes, so they might have the there. talent, but the thing mm -hmm. is, do you understand the music? Do you have the skill? Mm -hmm. And takes. do you have the knowledge of what you are doing? That is what makes it seem as if they are doing everything sharp, sharp, sharp. sharp. I think that, okay, you what, see, what the problem we have is the sense of, or the sense for music, even though it doesn't belong to one person, we are all trying to 
make money, yeah. which is the business aspect of it. Yeah. So a lot of the day, people, especially Ghanaians, just want to see if indeed you're a musician, what has the music done to your life? For you. For yeah. you, or they just want to see the, the monetary aspect of it, or flashy cars and all that. So the guy hit the studio, and one day they do, they, I call it disposable music. Mm. Called, in our time, even though I never had a chance to join any band, but at least I go to the studio and I was able to go with eight songs or maybe ten. Make sure I treat every music, at least it takes me about, let's say, one week for one music. So before I come out one with an week. album for one, one song. Week. So while I was in most of it recorded with Bodo Staga, we pay a whole one month, maybe two months for mm -hmm. eight songs recordings. So definitely, you wouldn't pay so much to go to the studio and thinking you just want to have one single mm -hmm. disposable song yeah. to come and chill for guests. <laughs> disposable to song. Yeah. You see, and it has become a normality for okay. Ghanaians who organize shows to think, yeah, one song is enough. Uh, then man in music, then, then. then they sit on the shoulders and begin to feel like, yeah, I mean, that's what I just, I am this, I am that. I don't blame the artist, but somehow... If you throw a little chase on the organizers, they will blacklist you. I mean, I've been through a lot of, you know, going through. Yeah, 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 going when you're hit, you see, when you would tell them the truth, they think you are bitter. No, I've never been bitter because I choose the music. I choose to do music out of what? Love. The love yeah. for it. Person, in fact, like I always say, if I knew, say, the music would fetch me so much, Come did you craft frame? Sir. Eh, come did you be frame? Because I your spirit. Eh, the call and the kind and sacra ya no be there. But you said if if you knew, but at that time you were loving your song. Like, like I said. R&B. <laughs> now no. Uh huh. So man, my bought a lot of songs. Now mind me, I a lot of. Fancy. Second film. Yeah. It makes you feel like. Yeah. That Akedi is talking about Sikano. I'm thinking about, you know, <laughs> yeah. Sikano. Yeah. Sikano is, for me, I'm okay. Yeah. But, said the about what? I'm a baby about that Sumba Jono because a musician can create a lot of jobs. Her uncle Kobo Shubia was Europa. He puts about 20 people. You see? So, why don't you put so much assertion into trying to make the entertainment industry, you know, big? Now, the BIA is to say, I buy my dream, right? Yeah, I can create a lot of jobs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Interesting. But you see, the thing is called uh, show business. business. Yeah. You know, the business attachment is very important. Yeah. Because the show will allow people to see what you can do. Yeah. But the business will put money in your pocket. It's okay. sustained. To pay bills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of us who are into the, that show format. You know, and, and the show format becomes something like a day-to-day, -day, you know, because they are called to go and perform here. You charge so much, they pay you, then you sit down. <laughs> no. The business aspect is very important. That means your music, like right now, as we're talking about technology, mm -hmm. we're talking about, I mean, the, the, the world has become a global village yeah. and things like that. Your music can hit out there at any given time. Yeah. Totally. Because over there, the musicians sometimes they make one hit. And that's and, it. And they just yeah. relax yeah. because the music is being bought in, uh, in London, it's being bought in Germany, it's being bought in Japan, and things like that. So the accumulation of the royalties and everything, they just sit down and relax. I think that's some of your colleagues haven't done that enough. Right. I want to say something. Okay. Yes. You're having come through. Mm. From you. you know, you've done high life for a very long time. We can call you a living legend. And, you know, um, we have high life music, but then what is original high life music? Is it going to the um, studio to record or going to a live band to record a music? Is that what can be classified as original high life? Original high life is coming from a rhythm called OCB. That's what our brothers took in when they went to London, made it OCB Sa. Mm -hmm. okay. OCB Sa. You know, OCB is the rhythm that connotates her life. Which is, if, if, if you can help us with that. Yeah, OCB is if you sit down the pim, with that rhythm, even if there's no guitar, nothing, you still just, you're yeah, gonna, you can, you can, that, you can just it. do it. 
So that is the basics of it. Okay. And okay. when the colonial masters came in, he started bringing uh, trumpets, the uh, saxophones, and things mm -hmm. like for marching. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we added, added, added to that to it with the guitars and everything. So the high life itself, it's, like I said, it's a, it's a kind of music that unifies people. Because when it's played, irrespective of which kind of well, tribe that you belong, twist, you, know? you will forget that you just join. But that's what our fathers, you what know, catapulted mm -hmm. on it. To be able to uh, sustain that high life rhythm, whereby that kind of rhythm that we had started traveling to other West African countries, like Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, Sierra Leone, and all them kind of things. You know, so high life is the basic. So anything that we do, it has to be, has to be built okay. on the basic. But then do you think the young ones coming up, can they take over? Are you worried or better still, are you secure that the young ones, you know, <laughs> coming up with Hyla, do you think that they can take over? Especially with the passing on of um, they, recent Hyla legends we are also growing up. They, what they, you they, think? they cannot take over. They can't. Because if you deviate from your lineage, yeah. automatically that means you, you are getting lost. But the Hyla will die. Mm -hmm. Uh, would die? Would never. Would die. No, it would so, never I mean, die. In the sense that they are not going to be. No, no, no. You see, the kids are coming, but not all. Of, not all of them are following the same um, line. My yeah. brother, do if you, you take somebody like uh, watch movies, um, uh, songs, we'll call it, uh, Uncle. I hope uh, lately, can them. Mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of songs that are being trending you know, on the TikTok yeah. are yeah. pure highlight musician yeah. music. You see, it tells. But then you, do you also, uh -huh. but do you also believe in modification because sometimes they try it's to add. I understand that because the point is. The high life music doesn't belong to one person, like I always say. Yeah. You see, I grew up listening to his music. So it's a chain of genres that I've been listening to. But mm -hmm. if I want to pave my way through, that is where the problem comes. Okay. Because a lot of things will boss me here and there with his star. I will dance with, but I will never try to compete with him trying to right. pick the same direction my somebody would tell because every artist wanted to be like, I am the boss. Even though as we learn trying to listen to somebody's song to draw inspiration, you always feel like I dance the music, I write, I choreograph. You want to be, you want to champion. That is why he say we are missing a track. Because one artist, you should be able to master one area okay. of the genre. Yeah. But all like Ghana, one music for me, for instance, nobody has written a song for me. So I wrote my I write my own music, after my own music perform, dance, choreograph. So out of the day, nothing comes because I don't allow other musicians to come okay. on board. Yeah. Because the money involved, the money aspect wouldn't allow me to, you know, employ a lot of True. great... You see, they look at you and give you, they give you a price tag. Huh? Mm. They look at you and give you a price tag. And they give so you a price Just like any other artist is giving enough money, we employ professionals because music, even though you are an artist, recording artist, you can go to the studio to record songs like Fatia for some mm -hmm. But when you wanted to implement life, I cannot be the only voice behind the whole music. So okay. give me enough money, and they will say you are brand. What is brand? It's a software. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to but, ask mm -hmm. this question. Talking about high life artists, high life mm -hmm. songs, I want to delve more into our. Um, award schemes and the mm. awards that are given to <laughs> individuals. Why are you a laughing desi? In 2019, Shata Wale was adjourned the winner for Best mm. High Life Song with his song. My are level. you? No. With My, my Level. Hey, My, my level. level. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, my, my Level. My Level, yeah. And the one who was in this. Exactly. <laughs> my Level. Daddy, I know you've heard that song. And mm. that, you've heard exactly. it. And also that same year, he took the song and the artist went to uh, Kwame Eugene. My level is it a highlight song? Uh, I, will, I, will. I know my level. I yeah, will. from the radio. My level. Mummy, mobo, me, nyami. That rhythm is there. So, mm. what they brought for the two so long? You see, you the call problem my level is highlight. that again. He says, okay, he that will. Again, you call it, but daddy, so <laughs> elaborate more on it. And that's also to say that he doesn't believe in modification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So, saying. no, I believe in that. Okay, mm -hmm. but you know, a tree grows branches. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. you know, so if it grows branches. That branch won't tell the tree that I'm different from you, the tree. Yeah, that's okay. what okay. You know, okay. because it's the tree that grew it. Yeah. And we mustn't forget that the branches fall. Yeah. And when they fall, the tree will grow another branch. Yeah. You know, so how life gives birth to everything, or all these kind of styles that we're coming out with. 
Yeah. If we're talking about modifications and things like that, yeah, it's there. But it has to be based on the roots. So are right. you... Um, are you at my level? Why my, is level my, my level is not, not a highlight. Like so. so. My level, you know, I know my anything. level. Uh, yeah, 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 I know uh, my uh, level. Uh -huh. and, uh, you know, so you call that high life. But there's a, a little uh, twist, mm -hmm. that, you know, okay. to it. That doesn't signify it as... Uh, and something that we call highlight. Highlight okay. song. Uh, okay. Which highlight artist do you listen to now? I listen to almost everyone. No, highlight artist. Okay, mention them. Current dispensation. They don't mention me, so I don't mention them. Oh, I don't like them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what about it's you? Funny. What, what highlight artist do you listen yeah. to? Now, I'm not, no. I'm not talking about you your, your people. The current the, crop the, of artists. The young ones, if you take them like uh, Kwame Eugene and Eugene. things like that, they are all imitating the Nigerian singers. Okay. Mm. <laughs> you see what I mean? What, you see, Nigerians came to learn from us. Yeah. But just like the movies. Mm.